Hi everyone, it's a beautiful good evening and it's half past six here at Bielton Cottage and just to start the video I'd like to say two huge thank yous Thank you Connie Braun and Cat Felix Thank you so much and thank you to Barbara Joan Barker Thank you so much You've both been very kind and I appreciate it very much indeed. Blessings to you both. Now, as you can see, a little bit different here. Um, I've got new curtains, but they're not actually new. You know how I shop? These are from the charity shop. And they're absolutely gorgeous because they match in with all the colours here in the room. So I've got one on that little curtain reel and another one over there. And so delighted because they're cotton and they're also lined. Wait till I show you. And they have the little um, cut out curtain hooks. And I bought them in the charity shop which is really good because it means that it's not just recycling, it is also helping out a charity and not supporting the corporation. I got them for five euro. <laughs> so it's 250 per window. I think that's a jolly good bargain, don't you? <laughs> so Jack's a bit pooped because he's been out for a very long walk. Yeah, don't look so tired, Jack, because you're going to come back out again. So, we'll go back out and I'll take you for a little stroll around and show you the amazing amount of changes that's been going on here at Bealton Cottage. Because it seems that everything is just bursting and busting into life. It's just crazy. So, we'll take you out. I had a little con... Oh! Seems to be a wee bit of rain there on the... Hang on. This is probably from being out before. Let me just... That's better, I think, isn't it? Right. <clears throat> now. Oh! Look at my roses. I'm really pleased with the roses this year because instead of all coming out at once they're sort of just staggering themselves. So sometime around the first or second week of May there's anything up to a couple of hundred roses on here. It goes crazy and this is just one side by the way. I'll show you the other side. The other side will be a little bit slower see. Now I did get a comment um, there that I've just read. It said, please, can you go a little bit more slowly <laughs> with your camera? So I'll try. I'll give it a try, okay? Um, now, the Pieris. Look at that. All that's new leaf, by the way. It's not flowers. Um, let's see which way should we go? I know, we'll go down along the front of the cottage and the driveway and then down through the fairy wood. So you can see here all the purple beach coming out. When I was walking up the road there with Jack I just noticed that um, um, from the road you see all this beautiful purple all this kind of bronzy purple up behind the cottage. So, also, I don't know if you noticed this, but since I did all the pruning here over the winter, the roses have got much more space. So there should be a really good flower in there on those roses because they're getting a lot more light. So I've got all my containers of water lined up there because I wasn't too sure how the weather was going to go. They keep um, saying that we could be in for a dry spell. So I'm just hedging my bets. 
still filling up the bird feeders over there, but not as much. The birds are now feeding more on the wing and they're also collecting up all the little insects and bugs that are around the trees. So instead of having to fill these bird feeders every day, which I was doing up until about three or four weeks ago, um, I now get away with filling them every third or fourth day. So you see, keeping the bird feeders going doesn't stop the birds from doing what comes natural to them. It just supplements their feed because of the dramatic loss of habitat that they've suffered. So look at all this beautiful clematis here. All the lovely flowers coming out. And again, these are growing very happily from two tyres, placed directly onto gravel. You see, so that gives them really good drainage. Have a look at the other side here. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And of course up over the roof as well. Now this is um, uh, indigenous to Ireland, this plant here. It's called sedge. And a lot of people don't really give it much time at all because it's quite unremarkable for most of the year. But when it comes into flower, look at this. It's called foxtail. Look, what do you see? Look, look at the little insects on it, look. Do you see how important this is? See, little tiny little insects on it. So this is one here, which is very beautiful. Look at that. It's got this little forked bit on the end of it. Actually, it seems to have the same little insects on it. So <clears throat> there are certain um, little creatures that really like you know, particular plants and they make the most of them. So the fuchsia is absolutely weighted down now with leaves and there's some flowers even this early you can just see the little red flowers there just slowly coming into bud so I'll show you along the front here as well because of course the clematis is coming out here on the front of the cottage wall this is the north side, of course. Now, what I did yesterday, I gave it a really good feed of water. Um, and, as I'm more than happy to share with you and tell you, because I think it's a wonderful resource that we don't use, I feed my plants, especially when they're coming into flower, with pea water. So that's one part pea to about ten parts water. So you can guess what I do in a bucket in the morning. Hmm, yes. But isn't that much better than going and buying chemical fertilisers? I mean, we have become a very mean little species, haven't we? That we don't even give what we put through our bodies back to Mother Earth. So here's the beautiful aquilegia about to come into flower. Oh, and there we go, look. This beautiful red valerian is coming on. This is the kind of thing that I like, you know, just a little bit of wood, a little upside down um, copper bowl on the top. And then you've got these lovely aquilegia just coming up in the shelter of it. So it's become like a little microclimate. Of course, for most of today, the cuckoo has been cuckooing all over the place, which has been lovely just to hear. There's usually two or sometimes three, sometimes more of them around here. Um, they don't seem to have too much problem finding a mate. So the little rustic bed on this side of the front of the cottage is coming into its own. I did a little bit of weeding in here last week. Um, 
I was in my dress and garden. I was coming in and out of the cottage quite a lot because it's very hard, you know, when you're not feeling well and you're trying to stay in bed. But what I did, I, I sort of just came out the front door in my dressing gown and I did a little bit of weeding. So the only weed that I pulled up here was the creeping buttercup and that was just to give all the other plants and flowers and weeds more of a chance. And you can see it's working. And these beautiful aquilegia are looking fab now, aren't they? I'm just going to lower the camera a little bit and then you can get a get an idea of their height and vigour. And of course you've got what is, I suppose, flowers here on the little pine. So what we'll do is um, I'll take you down, there's the cans and cherry, that's out in bloom, I'll just take you down along the front of the drive and then we'll cut in and go through the fairy wood. So this is Euphorbia here. So I've got two kinds of Euphorbia here at Bealtona Cottage, I've got the lime green one and I've got this beautiful orange one. Now this year I must remember to dig some of that up and kind of spread it about a bit because it grows very much in a little cluster there each year. So you can see here of course the, uh, the fuchsia flowers coming out on the fuchsia. Now <clears throat> I'll tell you something which I find quite um, intriguing. Um, there are times when uh, the occasional person, usually the same person I think actually, <laughs> decides to have a very vigorous, you know, um, sort of um, rant at me um, for having what he calls, this is, this is a guy down in, um, I think he's down, so, somewhere down in the south of Ireland, um, what he calls invasive species, in other words, non-natives. Well, you see the fuchsia? This has now become almost symbolic of Ireland. It's become one of Ireland's wildflower symbols. This is originally from South Africa. But it's become so naturalised here and it's been accepted and welcomed as um, as one of our native flowers. And of course... It does a remarkably good job for the bees. You know, we really have to think on a bit of a broader level now because we've got climate change, we've got global warming, we've got weather events that take us into a lot more heat, a lot more drought, a lot more rain, and we've got to allow plants that are going to be able to adapt to that. And this is my thinking. And be it right or be it wrong, in your opinion, it certainly worked here at Bealton the Cottage. Because I just keep bringing in more and more diversity. And in the 15 years that I've been planting and nurturing this land back from monoculture invasive rush, by the way. You see, a plant is only invasive if there's nothing else there. From monoculture invasive rush to three acres where everything is in harmony. So you can take the word invasive out of the picture altogether. You don't see any, any monoculture here. So some of the aquilegia now, look, has opened up down here in the driveway, so we've got this beautiful pink one. I think this is also referred to as Granny's Bonnet. And there's also some 
Hawthorne just ready to get in ready now to open up. So where would the bees be without the fuchsia? There's a question. So we're going to go in along there, you see. See the little entrance to the fairy wood? But we're going to just go down and go in through this area. I mean, this gunner has been here now for 15 years. If you can tell me where it's going to invade. <laughs> oh, silly. So all these different shapes and colours and textures and levels. You've got different heights going on. And of course the bird song, the continual bird song that says emphatically, this is right. That's the only, that's the only sign that I need to hear to know it's right. And of course the sound of the insects as well buzzing around. So here you can see bamboo which has been absolutely bossed out of it by the trees that are planted around it. Its roots are very confined now because the tree roots are much more vigorous and as a consequence it's dying off. That's fine, that's the natural way. Come on boy, up here, come on Jack. And you see all the daisies on the driveway? I haven't yet got the lawnmower out. You know, normally I would um, just mow the edges of everything during the summer. But thus far, I haven't needed to get the lawnmower out because I'm allowing... Um, well, first of all, I allowed all the dandelions to come up. Now I'm letting the daisies have their day. And when there are other things in flower, then I shall mow the driveway. Come on Jack, come on. So we'll go in this way and uh, yeah you can see the bamboo here, it's, it's beginning to die back. So I'll get in there sometime during the summer and thin it out and of course look, you see what I do? Again I just make habitat piles. Make lots and lots of habitat piles. So this is good for the for the life. So we'll go down into the fairy wood. I've been working down there <coughs> this morning and um, of course this little patch here which was my last little piece of lawn I called it for several years my homage to the lawn and um, during the winter there uh, I planted out uh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six birch trees and a beech tree. So this is where the wood continues. So you know I'm still planting. Uh, we'll go down this way actually we'll, we'll go down this little entrance way so this is bamboo here and that's planted in with horse chestnut and both appear to be quite happy they seem to be um, cohabiting quite well you can see it's a nice strong tree look no loss on that and no loss on the bamboo And of course when I've cut it back, which was last year, you know, again I make my nice little habitat piles. And of course when you look in, underneath that bamboo, look at the immense amount of shelter going on in there. I mean that's an absolute lifesaver for some birds and mammals when the weather is 
extreme. No, look at this. A mass of beautiful bluebells. And yes, these are the real bluebells because look at the little look at the little drooping heads on them. So I don't really want to tramp through there. You see, normally there's a little path that I can use going around this way, but I'm just going to back up now and go back the way I came and go in through the other entrance. But you can see how the bluebells are spreading down here. So Bealton Cottage is going to have its very own bluebell wood. So you can see down here as well, I think this is wild carrot. It's coming out down here and then of course below it then you've got sedge and ferns and primroses and because of the very deep leaf drop now going on every single year you've got this incredible um, uh, sort of fertility and here of course you've got all these beautiful little trees coming up so <coughs> So I'll have to cut back some of the um, dogwoods on this side to allow this path to emerge here. So we'll go down into the fairy wood from this point. See, that's where I was, just over there. No, this is um, a little spring, which I opened up again recently. I think I showed you this in a previous video and I had to lift all the stones down there and this is what happens sometimes you know there was a, there was a spring here years ago and then it seemed to dry up uh, but since I've opened it up again because there was some heavy rains there uh, about a month ago or something and I opened this back up again and um, it seems as though the water ran away is quite happy finding its way out this way. And look what's happened, look what's come up. Some beautiful celandines. Of course we had a bit of rain there with Storm Hannah. And then this is where I was working this morning. So just gently cutting back dead wood, not taking too much out because there's a lot of mosses and lichens will grow on the dead wood. But just taking out enough that will ensure there's lots of light gets to the trees and especially the young trees there's a lot of young trees coming up here there's a huge amount of regeneration going on and um, so it's just about keeping that balance you know so it does involve working here every day just to keep that balance because of course this is an emerging woodland you know, don't forget 15 years ago, this was just a rushy field. So it's important to um, be very mindful all the time of this life that's emerging, of this change that's happening. And um, 
I'll just show you up here. So again, I've just been opening up this path. You see all the little insects down here? Now this is wonderful, of course, because it means that the birds have got food. It's so important to be able to say, yes, there's lots of little insects flying about. Because that constitutes food for the birds and also food for the bats. So it's that continuing chain of life, you know, that sort of pyramid of life that we've got to be continually mindful of. And nothing, of course, is living or, or growing in isolation. And again, you know, an enormous habitat pile, but most of that now is quite dead and um, crumbling. So at some point, maybe towards the end of the summer, I'll sort of go in there and, and, and just sort of break it down, literally just walk over it and break it down. So as next year, there'll be a chance for ferns and, and, um, and other ground cover to come up there. And in a way, it's beginning to happen on the periphery here. So there's lots of ferns coming up. And uh, you can see in here ferns and celandines and then little ash trees coming up and and some holly trees here as well. Down along this way there's holly trees. There's one there just by Jack and little fairy thorns. So there's absolutely masses of life happening here. Now you can hear the cuckoo. So I'll just walk down along the little, the little um, stream bed that's flowing from the spring well. Of course this is a spring well. And you'd think to yourself, well, there's nothing happening there. But there's a massive amount of water being pumped up. You can just see it down here every so often. There's like a big bubble comes up and there's ripples. See? And of course the flow from it is amazing. Look at the flow. Of course this is why I knew there was something extraordinarily special as well about this land because those of you who have read the book, A Cottage in Three Acres, which is about my, my beginning of the Bealtaine project, will know that 15 years ago there wasn't a spring well here. There was no spring well here. I divined for this and then I dug it out with a pickaxe. And from that day, the water has flowed. It's all been part of my journey into realising just how utterly magical Mother Earth is. It's made me feel very humble really, you know, very very tiny in all of this. Because when you look at the life now that's coming up around the stream, look at the way it's flowing from what you perceive to be still water. And of course this is one of my little my little drains that I dug.